We consider ideal quantum gases consisting of massive particles. So massless particles would be photons or phonons, but here we just consider particles which have a mass. The Hamiltonian of a system consisting of massive particles is just the sum of the kinetic energy over the, of the particles. So if we have n particles, the j is one, runs from one to n, where n is the number of particles, and we have a Hamiltonian which is simply p squared j over 2m. And because we are working in the framework of statistical mechanics in the grand canonical ensemble, we should look at the states available to these particles, and that is described by the solutions of the one particle Hamiltonian. And here are these solutions. They are plane waves, and they are characterized by a wave factor k. And for a volume, let's say, which is cubic L by L by L, we know that the k's have the form 2 pi over L. And then there are integer indices, mx, ny, and nz. And that implies that if we sum over the k vectors, that we can always replace that by a v, which is the L to the third, over 2 pi to the power 3, and then integrate over the 3k directions. And now, uh, if we would consider this, that would mean that the particles do not have spin. So perhaps we should also, in the case of fermions or bo spin bosons, we should sum also over the spin directions of the particles. But I will leave that out for this uh, movie, and it's easy to add it in at the end. In terms of the quantum numbers k, the energy can be written as h squared k squared over 2m as usual. In a previous movie we have seen that the average occupation of a level is given by the Fermi Dirac or the Bose-Einstein distribution, and that depends on whether the particles are fermions or bosons, and here is that distribution. It's 1 over e to the power beta epsilon k minus mu and then plus or minus 1 where the plus sign corresponds to fermions and the minus sign to bosons. So this enables us to calculate the, the total number of particles in the system. That is called n and it's just the sum over k of this nk. Replacing now the sum over k by the integral with the v over 2 pi to the third, as usual, and then putting in the explicit expression for the uh, expectation value n k, the occupation, we get this integral, which tells us how many particles I can find in a volume v, and at a temperature t, and the temperature enters through this parameter beta, which, as usual, is defined as 1 over k b t. The next step is then to streamline this integral by introducing a new integration variable which is called x. And we define x such that in the exponent here, the first term just has the form x squared. And that leads to the following straightforward formula. Uh, we divide left and right hand side by v. And um, then we have a lambda which is the thermal wavelength h over 2 pi mkbt, which comes out of the transformation. And this is the result, which is a rather clean integral. And we see that there is only one physical parameter left, and that's the beta mu. And that makes sense because the density should depend on mu, on the chemical potential. Now we could stop there and say, okay, we have the formula, but it's interesting to look at the, the limit where the energy of the particles is high. And uh, then the system approaches the classical limit. And the reason is that if you consider the discrete quantum states in the system, uh, if the temperature is high, the average occupation will be low. 
and so there will be very few so if i think of fermions there will be very few particles per uh, level usually less than one and so i don't see the fermi statistics in that case and the similar argument uh, applies to the boson case so high energy means you are in the classical limit and it's interesting to see which corrections you get to the classical limit from the quantum uh, character of the system working this out boils down to an exercise in taylor expansion and in this case the limit x squared being high means that this number the first term in the uh, in the quotient is much larger than the plus or minus one and so we can expand uh, in terms of the one over this term and if you do that it's a straightforward exercise and it leads to the following formula so you have n over v is lambda to, uh, to times lambda to the third that's the same as the density n over v is little n that's the density in the system times lambda cubed that's one over pi three halves and then here is the expansion in the uh, of the numerator and the integral the integrals are always running from zero to infinity and so we anticipate that the first term uh, should be the classical result and then this is the first quantum correction and if you work it out um, you see that this integral leads to e to the power beta mu plus one over two in the power three halves and then e to the power two beta mu so you see that this leads to an expansion in terms of e to the power beta mu so e to the power beta mu tells you to what extent the uh, control is the parameter which controls the amount of quantum character in the system and indeed it's a straightforward exercise to check that n over v times lambda to the third equals e to the power beta mu is just the classical result for the ideal gas in the grand canonical ensemble for this purpose we use the well-known relation p times v is kbt times the log of z grand so the problem reduces to finding this z grand and we know what it is in the case of bosons and fermions which do not interact for fermions we have the product over all the k vectors times 1 plus uh, the e to the power beta mu minus epsilon k whereas for bosons we have the inverse of that expression in the product and there we have the caveat that always the mu should be smaller than the lowest value of the energies because otherwise this factor here explodes and we don't have a reasonable expression for z grand in that case so if we want to find the pressure, we can write it as KBT and divide it by V. And then we have to multiply by the logarithm of the Z grand. The Z grand itself is written as a product over K. So we now have a sum over K if we take the logarithm. And then within the sum, we have the logarithm in the case of fermions of 1 plus e to the power beta mu minus epsilon k that's okay for fermions and this is the appropriate expression for the bosons the sum over the k can be rewritten as an integral as usual so we use that the sum over k can be written as v over 2 pi to the third and then an integral over the 3k and we see now that a nice cancellation occurs between this v here and if we replace this sum by an integral we have this phi here in the numerator so they cancel and then we get the following results p over kbt is written as plus or minus for fermions and bosons respectively 1 over lambda to the third which lam well lambda again is the thermal wavelength pi to the power three halves and then an integral 
over the log and it involves not a k in this case but I've changed variables to x and the relation between k and x is as follows we use here that x squared is h squared k squared over 2m so x is just a the same as k but multiplied by some factor in the dilute limit the second term is small because the mu is low and we can use the Taylor expansion for the logarithm and the Taylor expansion for the logarithm close to 1 is the following 1 plus delta is approximately delta minus delta squared over 2 and higher order terms which we neglect and we can use that in order to rewrite the logarithm and in that case we obtain minus or plus e to the power of minus x squared plus beta mu plus one half minus one half e to the power of minus 2x squared plus 2 beta mu. So we find for the pressure over kt <coughs> two terms. The first one corresponds to a classical case And the second term gives a quantum correction. And we see that in the case of uh, fermions, the pressure gets higher. Then we have here the plus sign. In the case of bosons, we have the minus sign and the pressure gets lower. And that's for obvious reasons because the fermions do not want to be close together. Before we analyzed the pressure, we had analyzed the density, and for the density, we had found a similar expression, which is given here. And if we combine the two, we can eliminate the dependence on the chemical potential in order to find a relation between the pressure and the density. We see that to lowest order, the expressions for P over KT and N are the same. So to lowest order, we would find P is equal to n and we anticipate that there will be an extra correction term which is the form a times n squared and we can plug that into the above equations and then we find the following n has a second order correction term which is given here here that term is reproduced and then the a times n squared gives me a times the first order term squared, which gives me 1 over lambda to the 6. And it also has then a power e to the power 2 beta mu. And those two together should equal this term over here. So we have this relation for a. So it's then simple algebra to find an explicit expression for this A, which involves the difference between the two terms here. That's this result. And if we work that out, it becomes plus or minus lambda to the third, one over two to the power of five halves. So finally, <clears throat> we can then express P using that A as a power series in N. And that looks as follows. We have P over KT is N, and then there is N plus or minus a correction term, which is of order N squared. And the plus sign is for fermions, gives us higher pressure because of the Pauli's principle. And for the bosons, we have a lower pressure, so we have the minus sign here. We have found an expansion for the pressure in terms of the density in the dilute limit. I have made another movie in which I consider higher densities in the case of, in the bosonic case. And then we see the famous Bose-Einstein condensation occur. In that movie, I use the very same notation that I use here. So it's a, a good preparation for that movie. So we, now we can summarize. We have considered systems consisting of massive quantum particles 
but they are in the dilute limit. And the first thing we have done is we have counted those particles. We have seen how many of those we have. And if we disregard spin, we can write this as the number of occupation of, of particles per state. And then we sum the expectation value of that number over all the particle states. And we can write that transforming the sum over k into an integral as v over 2 pi to the third, and then an integral over d3k. And then we write here the Bose-Einstein or Fermi-Dirac occupation. So that gives us e to the power beta times h squared k squared over 2m minus mu, and then plus or minus 1, plus for the fermions, minus for the bosons. And the limit where beta h squared k squared over 2m minus beta mu is much larger than 1, this factor is much larger than 1, and we can make an expansion. And this expansion leads to an expression for the density. And that look, it can be written as an expansion of powers of e to the power beta mu, and here we have kept only the first two terms of that expansion. Then we have started from the equation of state, p times v is kbt ln z grand, and we have worked that out in a similar fashion, and then we have found the following expansion, which is an expansion which is very similar to that of n. If we combine the two, we can eliminate the term e to the power beta mu, and, and finally, we can then express P as a power series of N, and that looks as follows. The first term, P over KT is N, would give us just the classical equation of state of an ideal gas. And the quantum corrections, they have the same form as when the particles would interact, but that is merely a consequence of the particle statistics. In this case, the increase of pressure obviously corresponds to the fermion case. And when the pressure gets smaller, then we are dealing with bosons.